Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode eight of Sporamon. I'm Jack, and in today's episode, we're going to be going over the next three five stage evolutionary lines. Starting with the Turkin line, this is a fighting and flying type line with a ground and flying type alter evolution. So let's get started with our base stage evolution first. This is the Stork Sporamon, a fighting and flying type. Uh, the name coming from turkey, uh, chicken, and uh, maybe Ken as well from Street Fighter for the fighting type influence. As far as the stats over here, um, attack is the predominant one as well as a pretty good speed. This is definitely a speedy, heavy physical attacker. However, defensively, uh, special defense far outranks regular defense. So this thing can't take too many physical hits, but can take more uh, special hits. And its ability is power leg. Kick moves deal 50% more damage. So this is actually huge for a physical attacker. That means all of their physical attacks uh, dealing with kicking are going to do much more damage. So this thing is a very high power uh, early stage Sporamon. Moving on to its evolution, Storkin, based off of Stork, Chicken, and Ken. This is the Emu Sporamon. You can see it's gotten taller, larger legs, larger feathers, wings, longer neck, bigger body. It's uh, getting decently tall now. Still fighting and flying. Uh, its HP is pretty good. Uh, not fantastic. Its attack is definitely its best stat, especially along with its ability. Uh, its speed is also quite good uh, for a second stage. Defense and special attack are definitely very underwhelming, especially defense being a decent weakness. However, special defense is quite good and it's going to serve it quite well. Its new ability is Keen Eye, along with the original Power Leg. Uh, and Power Leg also has a extra damage boost. It's now 75%, meaning its attack stat is going to be even more massive. But the new ability Keen Eye means its attacks never miss. This thing's accuracy cannot be lowered and it doesn't uh, worry about evasiveness, which is very helpful for a fast physical attacker. And moving on to the final stage is Terstorkin, based off of Turkey, Stork, Ken, and also probably Turducken, uh, you know, Duck, Chicken, all of that. This is the Ostrich Sporemon, a fighting and flying type still. Uh, you can see it's quite tall, very vibrant colors, and a very full outright, upright stance. A lot of full plumage. It's got some head adornments, a little shoulder adornments, some very large claws attached to its enormous legs. Uh, HP is quite good. Uh, special, uh, physical attack is also fantastic, especially along with its ability, which now means leg, do leg moves deal double damage. This thing is going to have an absolutely massive attack stat when it comes to kick moves. Defense, pretty underwhelming. Uh, this is pretty poor for a final stage. Hopefully its speed and attack will allow it to take out its enemies before they can get a physical hit off. Special attack is also very poor. It's not going to be using that really at all. And then for special defense, it's pretty good. That's going to allow it to take a couple good special hits, especially with its decently high HP. And it still has the keen eye ability, but it has another new ability uh, for three total called Expert Fighter, which makes it immune to critical hits. So this thing... Uh, well, yeah, it's immune to crit critical hit. That means anything, especially critical hit specialists, uh, are going to have... This is a very hard counter to critical hit specialists. It also means uh, any stat boosts like defense or special defense won't be able to be hit through, at least with uh, critical hits, which is very valuable. This is definitely a very strong, fast uh, physical attacker. Great for late game. Now moving on to the Alter Evolution. This is Doderer, uh, based off of Dodo, Terror, and also Terra, considering it is a fighting and ground type. Oh, excuse me, I believe earlier I said it's uh, ground and flying. This is a fighting and ground type. It still has the feathers of a flying type as well as the beak. However, considering it's based off of Dodo, they can't actually fly. 
uh, that's where the inspiration really comes from. This thing is a much uh, bulkier frame, a bit shorter, stockier neck, uh, much stronger looking head and beak with very thick legs that are shorter and then very large, powerful uh, claws and feet. Uh, that does not have a tag, strangely enough. Must have forgot for this one. Uh, I would imagine this would be the Dodo Sporemon. Uh, fighting ground type, HP, uh, very good. Def it's even better than the regular Tristorkin. Attack, not quite as good. However, still quite good. Defense, much better. That's going to make it take physical hits way better. Its special attack is also uh, better, I believe. Let's double check. Yes, it's... Special attack is also better, which will definitely help it use uh, stab ground moves like Earthquake that are going to be predominantly special. And then there's also special defense, which is a bit lower. However, the defenses are more even. It's going to be able to take physical and special hits a bit more evenly, and then definitely better on the physical side. And speed is lowered. However, it's not terrible speed. It's about average. Uh, so that's going to be fine with its better defenses. This is definitely more of a jack-of-all-trades instead of the pure fast attacker that Tresorkin is. Its ability it has two. They're both different. First one being Strong Beak, Bite, and Peck moves deal 75% more damage. So instead of kicking, this thing is going to be predominantly uh, mouth-based moves. And it's 75% instead of double, so it's not doesn't definitely doesn't hit quite as hard as Tresorkin does. However, that's still a pretty massive damage boost. And that's other ability is sturdy, which means its speed cannot be decreased, and it is immune to earthquake moves. Uh, there's a I've actually used sturdy in a multiple different ways. There's the typical Pokemon, meaning be, being it can't be knocked out in one hit. There are some that means they can't be moved or grappled with, and then yeah, there are some meaning its speed can't be de uh, decreased, and yeah, it's immune to earthquake type moves. All right, and moving on to the Mega Evolution, Mega Tristorkin, still the ostrich, uh, still fighting in flying type. You can see it's very similar to regular Tristorkin, except a bit bulkier, and then just incredibly uh, exaggerated colors, and its plumage is sticking out a lot farther and more dramatically. Um, as far as stats go, it's mostly the same. They're just a bit boosted. That attack stat's going to be even better. Special defense is much better. And speed is also very good. Uh, and then the abilities are the same, except Extra Fighter has an extra uh, sentence to it, which reads, if hit by one, uh, meaning uh, if hit by a critical hit, it will punish its enemy with equal damage to what the crit adds. So not only is it immune to crit, but it also uh, has sort of a parry move involving crits. All right, and that's going to do it for that line. Moving on to our next one, the Sprite Might line. This is a Bug and Fairy line with a Bug and Fire Ultra Evolution. Starting off with Sprite Might, a uh, name based off of Mites, which are just small, a general term for small bugs, as well as Sprite, which is a term for smaller fairies. This is the Sprite Sporemon a bug and fairy type. As far as stats go, they're all quite underwhelming, except for special attack is pretty good, and special defense is actually great for an early stage, as well as speed is actually quite good too for a first stage. As far as the design goes, it's pretty simple. It's only got the legs and arms. As far as appendages go, it's got this fairy looking um, tail, as well as this head crest and a very small frame, which definitely feeds into its HP being very small. Uh, this thing, it can't take much, uh, many physical hits with its pretty low defense and low HP. It also cannot use attacking moves hardly at all with its abysmal attack stat. However, it's going to be a predominant special attacker. Its special attack is pretty good for a uh, first stage. And that special defense means it's going to be able to take early game special attacks very well. Its ability is Nature Shield, which halves damage from attacks typed Fire, Steel, Poison, Electric, and Ice. So this is a great ability for a Bug and Fairy type, as it would be weak to Fire. Uh, however, not anymore. That's just going to be regular damage from Fire. It would also be weak to Steel and Poison. 
However, now it's just going to be regular damage received from those. Electric, it would have been neutral to, but now it would resist electric. And then ice, it also would have been neutral to, I believe, and now it would resist ice. So this thing actually has a great uh, type chart with its ability. And moving on to Pixant, a uh, name based off of pixies and ants. This is the Pixie Spormon. You can see similar base build. It's got this long, lanky frame, these back-facing grasshopper-like legs, much larger as well as the uh, larger arms. It's got a much more heavily adorned head crest, these antenna, and its tail is longer and has a bit more of a curve to it. Uh, the Pixie Spormon, Bug and Fairy still, as far as stats go, HP, Attack, and Defense are all, especially HP, This is that's quite bad HP for a second stage. However, Attack and Defense are really just on the poor side, but not abysmal for a second stage. And then when it comes to Special Attack and Special Defense, those are both quite good for a second stage. Especially the Special Defense, that's really good for a second stage. And Speed is also quite good. Uh, its ability is still Nature Shield, which has the same effects. This thing, I would say, is probably a fast special attacker, as well as most likely a uh, pretty heavy status move user, considering its high special defense. So if it's going up against a special attacker, it's probably going to be really good at decreasing their stats, making them weaker, and then going in for a fast stab special attack. Also, with its ability, it's going to take less damage from a lot of types, so that helps it uh, defend more efficiently. Moving on to its evolution, the final evolution, Ferantula, based off of Fairy and Tarantula. This is the Forest Fairy Sporemon, Bug and Fairy still. It's got these large, more muscular legs, larger, mus more muscular arms. It's very small for a third stage, for sure, with an HP that doesn't even crack 100. Uh, however, you can tell as far as its appearance goes, it's much brighter, more vibrant. It's got these flowers on its back. It's got this curly tail. Uh, curly fairy tail and this large head crest still. As far as stats go, um, attack and defense, they're again not abysmal, but not great. It's definitely not going to be doing many physical attacks, and it can take some physical damage, but not that much, especially for a later game Spormon. Its special attack is quite good. It's not fantastic, but again, this is more of a special defender, with its special defense being fantastic. Speed is also still pretty good. Uh, he's going to outspeed the majority of uh, opponents it faces. Uh, it still has the Nature Shield abil ability, which is the same, but it also now has the Flower Shield ability, which uh, entails, after using a Grass-type move, increased defense by two stages. So this thing fires off a special Grass move, and its defense is going to get much better. So that immediately makes it actually a fantastic defender. It fires off some Grass moves. It's going to take uh, greatly reduced damage from special and physical attacks. So that's really what this thing's um, main purpose would be, a solid defender, most likely a status move user, who also has some decently, uh, a pretty decent ability to special attack. And with that, let's move on to our Alter Evolution. This is Scorchio, based off of Scorch, uh, you know, a fire, uh, so a word relating to burning something with fire, and Scorpio, uh, based off of a scorpion. This is the Flame Tank Spormon. You can see it's built with these outstretched legs. It's down on all fours. It's got some smaller fire tubes on its sides and on its face. And then it's got this long, curving up tail like a scorpion that's got a large flamethrower on the tip. It's also using those uh, feathery adornments that its other evolution has. Uh, bug and fire type, HP is, again, just about average. Not great for a third stage. Attack is actually lower than its counterpart, uh, so it's really not going to be using any physical attacks. Its defense is higher, so that'll automatically give it an easier uh, time absorbing physical attacks. Its special attack is also higher. This thing is definitely a predominant special attacker. However, its speed makes it not ideal for special attacking. Its special defense is pretty good too. It has pretty average defenses um, with quite good special attack and average speed. So not a fantastic fast attacker, but let's see the ability here. It's got two by the looks of it. First being flame body. When hit by a physical attack, 
it, it has a 75% chance to burn the enemies. This is great. That means uh, once it's hit by a physical attack, there's a really good chance it's going to severely cripple its opponent's physical attack, meaning its uh, defense is actually going to be bolstered by quite a lot. It also has the Inferno ability, which reduces damage taken from attacks typed grass, water, and ice by 75%. So these are, it has a four times resistance to grass already, uh, and it also resists ice already. However, water is actually a weakness it has, and that's going to re greatly reduce the damage it takes from that, which is one of its abilities now negated. It also is going to be take absolutely no damage from grass and ice now, making it a great combatant against those types. All right, and moving on to our Mega Evolution, Mega Ferantula. Uh, forest Fairy, Bug and Fairy type, you can see. Uh, very similar, however, brightly, more brightly colored, a thicker coat of flowers, um, so more, and then uh, three of these head adornments instead of just one. Uh, slightly larger frame as well. Stats, just exaggerated versions of its regular form. Uh, the new standouts definitely being special attack is really good now, as well as special defense being absolutely fantastic. This thing is going to take no damage from special attacks. And its speed is also quite good. Um, the, its abilities are also the same as its regular form. All right, and moving on to our last evolutionary line for this episode, the Lavan Z line. This is a grass and psychic type line with a grass and electric type alter evolution. Starting down here with Lavan Z, uh, this name is based off of Lamp Lavender and Chimpanzee, as this line is all based off of primates as well as uh, lavender bushes. You can see he's quite small. He's got a fairly regular monkey sort of. Uh, stance and build, however, with a very long tail with a hand at the end. He's got some grassy adornments on him, and he has the colors of lavender on top of his base, light green. Uh, grass and Psychic type, this is the Chimpanzee Sporamon. Stats go, they're actually all pretty underwhelming, best being Special Attack and Special Defense, which are only slightly above average for a uh, first stage, so really not great. And its speed is a bit below average. That's pretty good speed for a first stage, however, not fantastic. Uh, its ability is Lavender Bush. After using a grass move, its psychic power is increased by 20%. So this is basically a uh, an area of effect sort of move. However, it does stack. So the more grass moves they use, the stronger their psychic power is going to be. So if this thing can last long enough and use a bunch of grass moves, its psychic power will end up being very uh, intensely strong, most likely why it has the lighter in the stat department. Moving on to its evolution, Babender, which is a uh, baboon sporamon, named based off of baboon and lavender. You can see it's on all fours uh, with its back feet and standing on its arms. It also has this tail, which is now split into two hands, much more grassy adornments to it, uh, with a similar color, except a slightly darker green for the base. Uh, grass and Psychic still. HP is decent for a second stage. Attack and Defense are both on the underwhelming side. Attack is basically useless for this. Um, and then Special Attack is starting to become quite good for a second stage. And then Special Defense is also pretty good. Speed is just average, not fantastic. Its ability is now Lavender Tree. After using a grass move, psychic power is increased by 40%. So this thing, again, if you can keep it in battle long enough, it would really build up its uh, damage output. Moving on to the final evolution, Lavarilla. Uh, the name based off of Lavender and Gorilla. This is the Gorilla Sage Sporamon. A grass and psychic type. You can see he's actually sitting on the ground here. Uh, with his legs outstretched to his front and his hands and arms by his side. He's covered in a lot of leaf matter. He's got a, quite the mane of hair as well as this uh, large grassy mustache. His tail is now absolutely uh, massive, very long with these super long uh, split arms with the hands on the end. In the set department, attack again basically useless, especially for a third stage. HP not great, not going to give it uh, that much room to take damage. Defense, fine, not fantastic. Special attack is definitely fantastic. This thing can hit very hard in the special department. Its special defense is also amazing. It's going to take 
special hits very well, and its speed is actually super, super low. So it loses almost all of its speed now. It's almost guaranteed to attack second. Uh, thankfully, with its really good special defense and decent defense, it will hopefully be able to last for a while, even though it's attacking second. Its abilities are now Lavender Forest. After using a grass move, psychic power is increased by 65%. So again, use some grass moves. This thing's special attack is going to be absolutely massive for psychic moves. And its other ability is now Foresight, which makes it immune to all dark moves. Increased chance to have enemy attacks miss. So any enemy attack can now miss it, which is going to be great in its defensive department, especially for moving second. And it's now immune to dark moves, which is definitely one of its biggest and most common weaknesses. All right, moving on to the Alter Evolution. This is Gibba Shock, based off of a Gibbon, uh, name being Gibbon and Electric Shock. A grass and electric type. You can see he's quite small. Uh, he's got a similar stance to the first evolution, uh, but a bit bigger and a longer tail, as well as much more adornments with more electrified frills, hair, and some... Uh, larger yellow flowers on him. I, I believe he's based off of a daisy uh, field, just like how the others were based off of lavender. This one's based off of daisies. In the stat department, HP pretty bad. Uh, this is quite bad for a third stage. It's not going to be able to take that much damage. Its defense is also pretty bad. Its attack is pretty bad. It can't use many, special, many physical attacks, and it also can't take many. Its special attack and special defense are both pretty good, however not fantastic. I mean, they're both really good. He's going to be able to do quite good special damage and take quite good special damage as well. Um, and the speed is much, much better. It's actually fantastic speed. So this thing is going to be hitting first almost every time. Its ability has two. First one being Daisy Field. After using a grass type move, its electric power is increased by 55%. Right. So it's basically the same as the Lavender... Uh, line except now it's boosting electric instead of psychic and it also has the ability daisy power all grass type moves have a 45 percent chance to paralyze the target so this thing's going to be uh, heavily relying on paralyzing its target so they hope they won't be able to attack back and all of its grass moves as well as many of its electric moves will now be able to paralyze the target so hopefully it should be able to uh, especially with its high speed paralyze its enemy quite fast and finally, for the video and for the line, is Mega Lavarilla. The Gorilla Sage, Grass and Psychic type. Its HP is better. Uh, attack is about the same. You can see as far as his design, it's similar to Mega uh, Lavarilla, or similar to regular Lavarilla, except now it's fully hovering with all of its regular four appendages outstretched, making it look like it's uh, hovering off the ground with its psychic power. It has much more intense coloring with a darker green and a more vibrant purple. It has more grassy adornments and larger, more significant uh, tail hands as well. In the stats department, again, attack basically useless. HP, not fantastic. Defense, not fantastic. Uh, special attack and special defense, however, both absolutely massive. These things are going to be... It's going to be able to hit incredibly hard in the special attack department, especially with its first ability. And it's going to be able to take... Uh, in just practically infinite uh, special attacks with its very high special defense. Its speed is also definitely better than regular Lava Lavarilla. It's going to be faster than about one-fourth of all of the Sporemon, however, still not fantastic. Uh, it still has that ability, Lavender Forest, as well as Foresight. All right. And with that, they'll do it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll be going over the next three evolutionary lines. And I'll see you there. Bye.